Mary Anna Pomonis's Isis Anima series, acrylic airbrush on shaped octagonal panels, 18 inches by 18 inches in diameter, painted in 2020. In the time of death and oppression, these paintings are designed to channel the breath of life. The breath spray of the airbrush work in the paintings mimics the physical sensation of breathing. Breathing is a foundation of religious ritual and icon painting, a meditative bridge from the body to another realm. The light language and form of historically sacred artwork was designed to move the body. She wants her work to move through the viewer, creating a feeling of energy and possibility in a world mitigated by quarantine, digital screens, and social filters. Hi, my name is Melissa Klimek with Seer Gallery, and today I'm talking to one of the artists in our um, current exhibit, Breathe Breath, named Mariana Pomonis. Mariana is an artist who lives in Los Angeles. She's been working and practicing art out there for over 20 years, and she is a teacher of art at Cal State Fullerton. Mariana, thank you for joining me today. How are you? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no great. problem. Actually, up to you. Yeah. Um, so really, I wanted to just ask you a few questions today about your work um, in the exhibit, Breathe Breath. You have a series of paintings, Isis Anima, that are in the exhibit. Um, I was sort of interested to hear from you what inspired you to make the work and um, how is it connected to the theme of the show? Okay. Um, I've been working on a series of uh, geometric abstract paintings for the last three years that are based on architectural forms and then also quilt forms and pattern. Um, the history of pattern and decoration has been a rich one within the women's movement and feminism in general. And I was very interested in artists that were feminist artists that were interested in that tradition. And somewhere along the line in my research, I discovered uh, Judy Chicago. This was quite a while ago. Um, and Judy Chicago's, of course, uh, epic piece, The Dinner Party, um, has table settings. And in the beginning of the sort of, as you're going through sequentially, there are all of these ancient goddesses which I found really interesting. Um, and I thought, well, how interesting to think that we have this feminist tradition that goes back thousands of years and I don't really know the names of these goddesses. And so I started researching them a little bit. Um, my work is very connected, I think, uh, sort of formally in terms of the airbrush materials to Judy Chicago's work. Um, it's very much indebted to her tradition of making work. Um, and I'm also invested in using um, what I would consider to be feminine icons like tapestry or weaving or, you know, uh, looking for motifs that are decorative motifs that harken back to my feminine ancestry. So what I started reading and researching about uh, Inanna, it sort of led me to another goddess and another goddess and another goddess. Um, and so the stories became really um, interesting, I think, it, sort of as a parallel development to my work formally was this uh, sort of research element that was happening conceptually. So I, what I thought about doing was combining these two different uh, areas of research, both the architectural area that was interested in sacred architecture and then creating um, a sort of sacred architectural language that was feminine. So combining those feminine stories with the sort of formal conceptual or the formal architectural elements that were in my work. And when those two things came together, um, it, it, I got really excited because suddenly the work seemed to be more than um, simply uh, illustrative. And so I wanted to make work that didn't look like something I had seen before and yet somehow evoked some of the same feelings that um, I got looking at uh, sacred artwork in general. Um, I grew up in the Greek Orthodox Church and going to church was a big part of my aesthetic development as a kid. Uh, when I say church, I mean community because in the Greek community, the church is sort of the place, especially uh, in America where Greeks congregate and talk and have shared cultural experiences. So I wanted to evoke those feelings um, but then to apply them to a goddess in general. So looking for architectural forms that have feminine lineage is really hard because there aren't any. Um, going back into ancient history, women weren't architects. Uh, women were mathematicians and occasionally there's a philosopher or two, Aspasia, um, but there aren't a lot of women documented in Greek history. But if you go back before Greek history to Sumerian history, there's a scholar named Enhed Duwana who wrote about Inanna and used a lot of the symbolism and motifs that have showed up in my work. Um, as I 
was going back and forth with those two ideas, the ancient goddess and Inanna, I discovered that there was a lot of connection between both that goddess, that tradition, and my family and where I grew up. So I'm from, my family's from the island of Zakynthos, and Zakynthos, um, most of the people on the islands are named Pomonas or Pomona, um, and they're named for the goddess Pomona. So that the uh, full circle of the research for this work led me back to sort of my people and where I came from, and then the roots of those traditions and beliefs that um, predate a Greek history, and uh, really talk about the history of, of women at power in feminine mysticism. When I got interested in doing making a piece of breathe breath, I uh, thought immediately of this story that um, I remembered from doing uh, reading architectural or archaeological books when I was a little kid. Um, and this story is basically about um, the breath of life and the idea of um, the goddess breathing the breath of life into her son and reanimating it. So the work for the exhibition is based on that mythology. Um, and again, connecting it back to all of these ancient goddesses where they had powers, the resurrection powers that we would imagine from the Christ story is also evident in um, ancient Egyptian stories and ancient Sumerian stories. Um, so that uh, we were also as women capable of creating life um, and resurrecting life, that we were the center of that creation myth and that creation story, super interesting to me. Um, and so I wanted to create uh, a sacred space for breath itself, because I think right now, um, during the time we're living through at this moment, breathing and breath are the sort of metaphor that's floating through our everyday life. It is the way that um, the virus is transmitted and it's our fear about breath because of COVID. It's related to the history of police brutality and our fear about um, being choked or the, the plight of African-Americans and their fear of being uh, sort of throttled or choked by the police and, and murdered. Yeah. The image got teary eyed when you were talking because I was thinking of a mother breathing the breath and life back into her child and thinking of George Floyd's last words and how um, deep and impactful that is. So it's really impressive that um, that's the meaning behind your work. Thank you so much, Mariana, for taking the time to chat with me today and answer some of my questions. Um, Again, Mariana's work is currently on display in our Breathe Breath exhibit on the Sear Gallery website. Mariana, as I mentioned before, is an amazing painter and um, lives and works in Los Angeles and teaches at Cal State Fullerton. She is also one of the founding members of the Association of Hysteric Curators, which is a feminist art collective um, that brings artists together and looks to raise um, awareness and bring a larger platform to feminist identifying artists. Thank you so much, Mariana. Have a great day.